Hello guys, just score on here and welcome back to another episode of Building the Beekse Bergen. And today we are going to be working on something new, whereas in the last few episodes we've kind of been working on revisiting and finishing up some old areas like the Africa village and the entrance. Yeah, today I really want to be tackling uh, a new section of the zoo, which is going to be the elephant house over here. And um, this has been a bit of a challenge to prepare. Um, a while ago I made this kind of shell to kind of indicate where it was going to be. I fit that with a bunch of buildings, as you can see around here. Um, but when I had a look at it today again, I noticed that there were some things not completely right with this thing. I started to question whether or not these measurements were correct. So I opened up Google Maps to have a look at the elephant house over here and do some measurements using the measurement tool. So I measured up everything that I needed to know multiplied it by two thirds because that is the skill at which we're building the zoo and now we have a bunch of measurements we can kind of put into here okay so with those measurements i have established that this is the correct dimensions of this building so well, the only thing i haven't really checked is this one which should be 28 meters in real life so roughly 18 to 19 in this one. So we got 4, 8, 12, 16, 18. So that's actually fine. So now I actually just have a workable footprint. So time to make this building. So let's do that in a little time lapse over here. We haven't done one in a while, so I thought it'd be nice. And we're starting off with getting the main shape of this building in uh, on the y-axis now. Of course, we have the footprint. Now we're going to put in all of the roofs and such. So over there, the roof slants. And here we have kind of a, a pointy roof on the side here. And that last bit uh, is completely flat. So is the top of the big section you can see over here. And what's also interesting about the big section is that there are some... Uh, kind of round windows on top uh, you'll s you'll see what i mean when we get to them but now it is time to kind of color the building because uh, yeah we are going from this metal plank outline to the actual colors it should be and i'm still kind of playing with the skill here and there making that uh, area over there kind of bigger which is going to be the viewing area and yeah now we're just coloring in the rest of the building most of the building is um, kind of the, the bottom half is a different color while the top half is still in that kind of um, metal plank. <coughs> uh, now we're putting on the roof uh, using plaster pieces so we can get it to be the right color and stuff. And here you can see me kind of experimenting with that round roof. And yeah, these pieces are just a bit too big. I tried using them for the rhino stall as well, but I kind of failed in doing so. So um, here I tried to use these ones, which is what we ended up using for the rhino stall. But I decided, you know, let's try to make something a bit more custom. Using the new glass pieces, we should be able to get a nice round uh, shape, I thought. So that's what I went and tried. And yeah, here I'm just looking for a piece that is nice and round and that I can use for kind of the support beams throughout. End up going with this East Asia uh, painted timber kind of curved piece. And yeah, now I'm just putting on the glass pieces manually myself. And uh, that's how I end up with this pretty nice curved roof piece. But looking at the reference here and there, I kind of decided that uh, it should be even more curved. So I end up changing it a bit. But I do end up also putting this same curved roof on the rhino stall which is uh, pretty nice because now that kind of has um, yeah, the, the right type of roof on there, which is great. Yeah, and this is the point where I'm like, okay, it needs to be a bit bigger. So let's get some more curve in there. And I start kind of messing around. I checked if it's actually still smaller than the in-game curve piece, which it was. So that kind of gave me the, the push through to like, okay, yeah, sure. This is better than the, the in-game one. So. Let's just make it, so redoing all of this stuff. And then 
that's the roof pretty much well not then we still need to add more of these plaster pieces but that's the this, this, those shapes done which is pretty great yeah here i'm just playing with the shadows to see what that looks like and it looks really cool of course that's what's really great about using kind of glass pieces like this is that you can really get some nice interiors as well Yeah, now we're going to be messing about even more for the other roof, which is going to be a custom roof as well. Because there wasn't really any roof that really suited me. Uh, oh yeah, well first we're kind of putting in a side window here. I have to go with some overlapping pieces because there's nothing really that fits. So, bit of a shame, but yeah, this is what we have to deal with. So yeah, constantly checking every angle to see if things are correct, but here we go for our new custom roof. And you saw me first try to put some glass in there. That's because there are going to be windows in this thing, which is actually these red um, markers. Those are going to be the windows. And uh, I put the glass there because that's what I did for the windows of the primate house. But I thought, okay, now we have the new glass pieces. Let's use those instead. So here I'm just doing a whole bunch of measuring to see like, okay, how should I fit in these windows? Um, so I'm constantly varying the sizes to see like, okay, it should be a bit bigger, a bit smaller. And ultimately we, will, we go with this and now we just put it all in the right place and we can start to fill out the entire window uh, or roof, I should say. And make it the right color and then we can put in a window and just big window piece actually covered all the windows which was great because that um yeah had kind of the the the, the actual glass pieces you'll see here uh, don't fit in the entire thing so we kind of have to either have some overlap or make some other compromise i go with a different compromise actually uh, so we're gonna remove those other glass pieces in a bit i think maybe i didn't i actually don't remember <laughs> but yeah here i am kind of debating what to do for the roof um, yeah okay I, I keep the glass piece but I cover up this bottom bit with some more plastic and then we decide to just do the roof the same as I did the primate house uh, using these East Asia painted timber pieces um, we can get kind of these grooves in the roof that make it look like a bit like a corrugated roof I guess And then we just use the same effect on the other roof. Now we use the same material to kind of put a ledge around the entire roof. Kind of ties it all together which is pretty good and yeah then we start to work a bit on the interior kind of painting the walls in here to be the right color making sure nothing sticks through any walls and getting ready for where the viewing area is gonna be and over here I kind of struggled with the painted uh, metal end up just putting a plaster piece there. I also eventually decorated a bit more. I don't know if that's in the time lapse or not. Um, but what is as it's now, you can hardly tell that it's actually not a painted metal piece, which is pretty good. So, yeah, putting in some people for scale, and then we can really start to shape the inside. And uh, yeah, here became the struggle. Um, can they fit through? Of course they can't. Uh, so yeah, constantly fidgeting around like, okay, how small can we make this door? Um, you'll see later on the episode um, that it doesn't really matter anymore. But for now, I thought it was nice if they could walk in and out. And yeah, I was first changing the height of the wall above, but then I realized I could just dig a little hole and they would be able to walk through, which they did. Um, so yeah, that was a good solution for that. And now we get to kind of some interior decoration because on the inside there's all these logs on the wall that kind of give it a bit of a 
jungle feel almost. I don't know. It's not really a jungle feel. It's just, just, just a nice decoration, I guess. And over here, there's a big metal kind of bar that is part of the door mechanism, I suppose. So I just make that out of these girder pieces. And then, last but not least, there's a bunch of logs and rocks over here that kind of prevent the elephants from going into the moat. And there's another door over there. Which goes to the, uh, to the paddock in the back. Right, so hope you enjoyed that little time lapse. I hope it turned out well. Uh, so here we have the overall shape and just general idea of the uh, elephant house but I don't know especially on the inside that never really suits very well for a time lapse so I think I'm just gonna go ahead to my usual jump cuts and we're gonna put in some of the interior exterior uh, I think these toilets need to move but I don't have a very clear picture of where they are exactly let me just pull that up yeah, here we have the toilets. Now I can see they're over here. There's not a lot of space over there. Actually, you can see the roof. Let me check Google Maps instead. Is that the roof or is that the roof? Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they need to be more to the side because that is... Because over here we need a bunch of staff area and backstage stuff for the elephant stall. So let's just do it like this. All right, so we have the main decorations of the main building done. Over here we have the two entrances, we have these two staff doors. Uh, back here there's the toilets, as well as another staff door. And then on the back here there's another door. And yeah, of course we have the main door, which we need to... which we still need to decorate in s some way. Then on the inside there's a lot of things happening. Uh, we've got some lighting, some extra support beams, as well as the entire viewing area. Well, not the entire viewing area, there's still some details missing, but yeah, there's some pretty cool stuff, like this, this monitor, as well as a radiator. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna continue working on this, and I'll see you back in a bit. Okay, there's a bit more work done. We're starting to get some of the plants. Uh, I've got a fence of a kind of thatch. And and I've done all of the rest of the building. So the building is now pretty much done. It's just the, um, the two habitats around it, this one and this one. All right, another pretty big jump as we now have the entire surrounding area of the outdoor habitat finished, which includes a big concrete wall and a big dry moat that is keeping the guests and the elephants separate and what we also have over here is the start uh, i've kind of broken down the path leading towards it but there's a second habitat gate here and the way that i set that up is that this habitat is like this while the elephant habitat if i'm able to select it uh, goes around that one so basically this habitat is inside of the elephant habitat. And what this is going to be for is the mandrels, uh, which are kind of our <laughs> take on the bamboos. Bamboos? Wow. Baboons of the zoo. Now over here we have the big gates that kind of keep the elephants uh, between the two habitats and between the outdoor and indoor area uh, to be able to make them able to walk in and out of the indoor area we're not going to be able to put a gate in this one we can either leave it like this so we'll have this gate to kind of show off oh yeah that's what the gate would look like if uh, we wouldn't have to remove it uh, or we could put in an open gate the elephants won't be able to walk through it but i will be able to move them around manually and that way uh, we could have like one or two indoors and one or two, or maybe three, uh, outdoors. But the elephants won't be able to walk back and forth by themselves. 
Uh, the keeper will still be able to go everywhere though, so yeah, that should be fine. I think I actually quite like that idea, so I might give that a shot. Another big upside of doing the gates this way, uh, other than the fact that it looks great, is that we can prevent this. This is the traversable area of the man troll. Who is uh, currently walking around over here. And yeah, he uh, he can escape all over the elephant stall. So because this stuff is inaccessible anyway, I doubt even the babies can get through. Yep. We are going to be able to simply do my favorite trick and get some upside down elephant grass in here. Just like so. Uh, which will prevent the mandrel, or which should prevent the mandrel from escaping that way. So let's see. Yeah, and now he can't get out anymore. He can, however, climb the door <laughs> that is the access point of this habitat. Um, don't ask me how he does it. Apparently they can phase through concrete walls to grab onto the timber over there. But uh, we'll... Uh, see if that needs to be solved once this entire thing is done um, we might change some things around now i do have to say i am a bit saddened by the fact that we don't have enough space inside here to really make the holding cells for each of the elephants because i found so many videos that show like um, backstage things like keepers standing over here, interacting with the elephants, uh, elephants get, kind of getting their feet cleaned because uh, they have like this toilet should be way smaller I feel like uh, leaving much more space for the keeper area and the elephants in general but of course also we are working with a skilled down version so that doesn't really work well now over here we should have even more holding cells, as well as over here, this entire kind of flat roofed area, which I'm breaking down because I removed the keeper hut over here. Because there's going to be an entire staff facility which is going to contain like large keeper huts and staff rooms. Let me actually show you that because it's, it's over here and you can actually see like these windows and stuff. Um, yeah, I think this building is, suits itself perfectly for some staff rooms and uh, keeper huts but yeah this uh, this little building is the indoor habitat of the male elephant which is this one because he doesn't actually walk around in this habitat at all from what i understand uh, this is his little home <laughs> he's uh, solitary and um on, in this little habitat sometimes they put him with two females uh, when they are trying to mate like they were the last time I was at the zoo but yeah overall this is his little indoor habitat this is where they let him outside once once they do and then he can roam about freely in this space during the day and uh, let's actually name him because he is named Calim Calimero there we go the bull of elephant and he's actually from what I understand um, Calimero is the biggest male elephant in Europe which is pretty impressive so I hope we actually have a, a, a sizable size gene for this lad ooh we, we, we gotta get <laughs> we gotta get a better better Calimero this one does not live up to his name Okay, here we have the entire perimeter of Calimero's little, well, ter territory, I guess. This is his, uh, his land. And yeah, I went with elephant fencing uh, using the in-game barriers, uh, the electric fence. It was just the easiest for me to, to make the barriers this way. I've seen people use like metal posts um but i don't know it i felt like it would be very difficult to make this look very good it's just so much easier to be able to plop down the fence and then put the barriers in place so yeah it doesn't look completely like real elephant fencing because the 
ropes are a bit too thin and there's a bit too many of them, but I think it looks fine. I have a new Calamero. This is now not Calamero. <laughs> we have this guy who has an 83% size gene. So that should... Oh, it's not a habitat yet. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? There they are. Oh, he definitely is bigger. Because I measured the height of this door using the other one. Um, wow. That's really cool. What's he doing? Man, he is happy. He is running around. <laughs> Look at him go. Okay, he's calmed down. Oh, now he's tired. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Okay, let's fill out this habitat a bit more. Because there's a bunch of trees. There's like a little pond over there. Um, yeah, there's plenty to be done still. Plenty to be done. I don't think I'm going to give him any... Uh, female soothers <laughs> for the moment he can just uh, enjoy his habitat by himself and there we have it Calamero's habitat is pretty much finished there should be a bit more trees in here but I really didn't want to hurt his traversable area any more than I already had yeah, as you can see like even the smallest rock uh, just takes away from it so he started with about a thousand meters, now he's got like 500 left, so yeah, let's, let's just not cut that anymore. And now he can still kind of walk throughout the entire habitat, like if I were to put any more trees in this section, like this entire part would be blocked off, meaning that the viewing area from over here will have nothing to see. Now the only problem is, um, even though from what I understand from the educative videos that the zoo provides, um, Mill elephants are quite solitary, yet, according to the game, even a male bachelor group should be minimum three elephants. So, now people are complaining, oh, he looks so lonely. And it has loads of plants in it. It's supposed to, we're in a forest, you dumb twit. But yeah, um, according to the game, he's now sad, and he also just looks very sad this way uh, even though of course we have welfare turned on so I'm gonna say maybe maybe some some mates will cheer him up I, I doubt it but let's let's buy some more elephants <laughs> but yeah I am really really happy with how this habitat turned out and now we just have the big one left which is a bit of a difficult one to tackle because we also have to build the entire indoor area for the baboons or the mandrills. And what I'm also considering is that since we kind of cut the habitat in half, well we cut off the stall from the habitat, like uh, there's not really a reason for them to be one habitat anymore, um, which is kind of causing its own difficulties. So yeah, I think we might want to kind of cut it off and then make uh, and then just drop the elephants back in using uh, the baboon habitat that we have over here uh, like I don't actually have a good way oh wait we do yeah we can actually enter press it like that okay that's great so yeah we might just want to drop in the elephants into the baboon habitat Anyway, um, should have some new elephants by now. Yeah, there they are. Here they come, here they come. Actually goes pretty smoothly. They just walk, they don't sink into the ground at all, like they do in the other elephant habitat. Um, not sure if it's because they're not really entering or because I did something magical and it works. <laughs> but we now have two more elephants, so they're gonna complain about this even more. This one has to go to the thing. But yeah, this is actually correct because the zoo does have a total of seven elephants. So now we have uh, two in the stall, two on the field, and three in the breeding pen. Right, so I started on the boon or mandrill kind of indoor habitat. And I think I'm gonna have to remove most of this. It's really not worth it because I found a video of some keepers actually inside of this habitat so I knew what it looked like. It's, it's really cool. They have got 
the, the baboons got like some entrances over here. They can climb through, climb over the top of the keepers, and they have a slide down. So yeah, I got to work on building that, but then I realized that there's a couple of issues here. Mainly the fact that the keepers can't actually use this at all. Because the keepers can now only get to this kind of center row. Uh, and they're missing out on the entire habitat. So I gotta I gotta think of something to to give them the ability to. Um, because uh, this is not gonna work. Okay, so I thought I didn't have any pictures of this side of the thing. But that seemed so weird to me. So I went and looked a bit further. And I accidentally put them in the giraffe album. So... <laughs> Here we have this side of the habitat, and that shows me this big empty wall. So what I decided to do is to put this little door onto that wall. So that door is not there in real life, but it does solve the issue because the keeper can just walk through there now and access the habitat. And look, he is feeding the elephants. I think that's actually the best solution because it keeps all the functionality of this place and kind of the path and the, and the door and yeah, it's, I think it's the most, um, yeah, it's the best solution. Alright then, here we have kind of baboon rock, I guess, I'm not sure what to call it. It is nearly completed and this is definitely one of the things I'm this might be one of the things I'm most proud of <laughs> so far. Um, we've got simple waterfall. It's like one of the two waterfalls in the zoo. And this is the only good one in my opinion. So, gotta give that some justice. I think it looks pretty nice. Pouring into this very shallow bath. And into this grate. I'm not sure the monkeys... Or... No, they can't go in there. But I mean, they, they can use the drink and such, so that's pretty cool. Oh, can to show us that? Oh, no, they had a baby. Oh, <laughs> the elephant's going nuts. But yeah, it, it's really cool, because they can all go inside if they want. And on the inside, they have this little room. Of course, it's not decorated whatsoever, but that doesn't really matter. It's pretty cool they actually use it as shelter. So yeah, I, I wanted to plow through and try to finish more this episode. But, I mean, we did so much. And I keep telling myself, like, oh, it's just a little bit more. But we have to put on a bunch of decorations for the elephants. Like their feeders, some kind of hanging pieces of cloth that they use for shelter. Uh, and just in general, just neaten this up. We need to neaten up the entire border. We need to put stuff around the border. Um, there's a little playground over here. There is all the foliage around this side. So yeah, there's plenty more to be done for the next episode. So I'm just gonna have to leave it here. And I'll leave you guys with one more thing to show. Which is this, which is freaking hilarious. And you'll see uh, when it rains, it pours. And when it rains, you'll start to see all the mandrills make their way <laughs> taking a run for it and of course they'll make their way into the indoor habitat which is pretty cool okay now they're not really doing it as much oh because they had food damn it ruined the moment well maybe another time i'm gonna leave you guys off here uh, and I'll leave you off with some screenshots because that's the thing I used to do and I haven't really done in a while. I don't know why, I think I just forgot about them. But uh, lately I've been getting some requests to show more of the reference photos. So, of course the best way to do that is by just showing you guys um, some side by sides. So yeah, let's do that right now. So starting off, here's the top down view and then for the comparison, this is what we're at now. So still a lot to be done. Then here we've got the first shot of the inside of the stall. Now nah, it looks almost the same, like it's really great. This one's not as good, but uh, the only thing that's missing really the, the things inside the stall, which we can't really put there because of the first area stuff. 
Here there is some death missing, but it's not completely finished yet. Then we get to Calamiro's little shack where people can view him and the habitat itself. This is the most finished part of the um, things that we did today. So we've got a lot of pictures of these here. You can see a good shot of the gates. And uh, here's a bit of the deforest area where we had to kind of trim down on trees, but it still looks really great. And yeah, here's a nice bit of fence. Still, you're gonna put a lot of foliage around that. Then we've got just some parts of the stall also needing more foliage. Like it's all, all not completely finished yet. And here's a nice distant shot of, of stuff in the distance, kind of taken from the same spot here. And we've got this gate, still gotta put all those fences and, and a lot of that rock work in there. And then last but not least, we got baboon rock. A lot of compromises here because of how we had to shape the habitat. Also, because we kind of made Africa Village a bit bigger, I also have a bit less space, so that's why. But those are all the screenshots. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.